A thunderstorm was rumbling over the city. The rumble and rolls of thunder frightened Carrot with fear, who scooted halfway under the sofa. Heavy drops of rain drummed on the windowsill. Lily stood at the window and stared out into the darkness. The same trickles were running down her face as on the glass. When Carrot once again howled and rushed to the sofa, the girl shouted at him, Fool! What are you afraid of? You're sitting here in a warm apartment, and the storm is out there, on the street. Stop chickening out. Such a big dog, as if understanding the words of his mistress, Karat clutched his tail and slightly wagged it, guiltily walked towards her. The girl patted him behind the ear. David was delayed. Lately he had been delayed more and more often. Lily realized that the last month of her pregnancy made her less attractive to him, but right now she needed his support more than ever. They weren't married because they both considered a stamp in their passports a useless formality. Could any stamp be a symbol of true love? A child was another matter. When Lily found out she was pregnant, she was over the moon. She and David had just started their life together. Lily came from a small town where she lived with her grandmother. Her parents she did not remember. Her mother died when the girl was only three years old, and she never saw her father. In the metropolis, the girl hoped to start a happy life. She entered the culinary school without much difficulty. After graduation, she got a job in a small restaurant. It was there that she met David. The guy liked the pretty and cheerful girl at once. He took care of her for a long time, bringing flowers at the end of each shift. For a provincial girl not spoiled by male attention, such romantic gestures seemed something fabulous and unimaginable. Lily fell in love almost immediately. The feelings were mutual, and the young people began to build a relationship. Lily lived in a small apartment on the outskirts, which she rented with her friend Molly. Buddy often brought guys to visit, and rarely when they were the same as the last time. Molly's behavior Lily did not condemn, after all, everyone had the right to live the way they wanted. But living in such an environment was not particularly comfortable for her. When David suggested moving in together, she agreed without a second thought, even though they had only been dating for four months. Lily was a good cook, so she immediately decided to start spoiling her beloved with delicious food. David liked it very much. The guy was earning well, so he offered Lily to leave work and fully devote herself to the household. And she was only happy to make the house cozy. After all, David was so pleasant to return every evening to the place where he was loved and waited. They lived like that for three more months, and then Lily saw the coveted two stripes on the test. All day she sat on pins and needles waiting for the return of her beloved David. When the girl told him the news, the guy was very happy, picked her up in his arms and circled her for a long time. Lily was happy, and everything was fine. Except that lately David had been distant. He came home late, ate in silence, and went to bed. Sometimes he even forgot to kiss her. The girl associated such behavior with her position and loss of attractiveness. Attempts to bring his beloved to a serious conversation did not lead to anything. David explained that now the work takes a lot of energy, but Lily felt that it was more than that, and now he was delayed again. The girl was worried about the storm. The wind outside was so strong that a couple of trees in the yard even had a few large branches broken off. I hope he's okay, she thought, peering into the darkness. I haven't seen a storm like this in a long time. Maybe David is just sitting in the office, waiting out the storm? That's exactly what I'd do if I were him. Finally, she heard the sound of the lock opening. Carrot barked happily, greeting his owner. Here I am. A familiar voice came from the hallway. It's watering in there. David? Lily exclaimed happily, coming out to meet him. I was so worried. What are you doing? The guy grinned. You can't be worried in your position. How could I be? You were supposed to be here at six o'clock. It's almost ten. And I've got a lot on my mind. Silly girl. David put his arm around Lily's waist and stroked her stomach. Oh, you feel that? She's been like that all day. She smiled. The baby inside her stirred again. I think it's coming. It's about time. All right, don't worry. You'll feel better in a little while. Well, I don't know how much better. Lily frowned. David, honestly, I'm so scared. Scared of being a mom? Come on, because you and I can do this together. I love you so much. Lily pressed her whole body against her man. You must be hungry. I cooked in there. No, honey, 
We ate at the office. The guys ordered delivery. I'm sorry, I seriously didn't know when I'd be back. Okay, well, the girl's a little upset. Why don't I give you a bath? Cause you're soaking wet. I could use a hot bath. Leaving David with the dog, Lily went to make a bath for the boy. When the water was about halfway up, she felt a sharp pain in her stomach. The spasm repeated itself. Lily fell to her knees and groaned in pain. David, she screamed. What took you so long? Indignantly, the boy looked into the bathroom. Oh my God, David, it started. Lily said in a strangled voice. Shit, even the water broke. Now wait, what do we do? Lily looked at him fearfully. Can you get dressed? Come on, get ready for the hospital. I, I, I can't. Lily screamed in pain. So stay here. I'll call an ambulance. I hope they get here quickly in this storm. David quickly contacted the dispatcher's office, explained the situation, and helped Lily to lie down on the bed. The contractions were becoming more frequent. The girl was in pain and scared. The minutes stretched interminably long. David was panicking no less. He decidedly did not know how to help Lily and only stroked her arm. After about 40 minutes, the ambulance crew finally arrived, checking to see how often the contractions were recurring. They moved Lily onto a stretcher and took her to the hospital. David followed. The labor went smoothly. After only three hours, a healthy baby girl was born. When the baby was brought to her mother, Lily was already slowly coming to her senses. She carefully took the baby in her arms and put it to her breast. David was allowed to enter the room. When he saw his daughter, the boy smiled, though his face was still very frightened. Look how much she looks like you, Lily whispered, but keep your voice down. I'm so afraid of disturbing her. Oh my God, David whispered back. What a miracle. Does that mean I'm a father now? Yes, honey, Lily replied tiredly. This is our daughter. The guy stood and watched mesmerized as his little girl quietly lapped. David, Lily said suddenly, you're not wearing your face and it's so late. Go home and get some sleep, we'll be fine here. Lily spent the next three days in the postpartum ward. David never came to see her, citing a heavy workload. Although Lily felt bad about it, she understood. After all, the guy had to make money. Molly came to visit her a couple times bringing fruit. Don't worry about it, her friend comforted Lily. Your David's not going anywhere. So what if he works? You'll be better off now than you were before. All your time will be spent on the baby. Men work all the time. It's okay. You'll get in shape and everything will be fine. Of course, a pregnant woman can make a man's desire for a baby go away. And it's not just the loss of physical attractiveness. Think about it. You were more capricious. And anyway, so he found an outlet in work. He's distracted, so to speak. You think so? Lily doubted it. It's just that lately I feel like he's gone cold on me. He's not cold. It's normal. How would you know? You've never even been in a normal relationship. It's psychology, Molly said with an air of importance. You'll see, he'll be on his knees apologizing to you for being so inconsiderate. Molly, I know all that, but it's just a stupid feeling. It's just postpartum jitters. I hope so. Now I'm worried he won't be able to meet me because of his job. Oh, woe is me. You're on your own. Cabs have never been canceled. And don't get yourself worked up. By the way, when do you get your discharge? Day after tomorrow? I'd come to your place myself so you wouldn't have to worry. But I've got a new boyfriend who's called me up to the country. Molly, come on, go and don't even think about me. Maybe you'll get something serious this time, eh? I wish, said her friend dreamily. There's such a man there. It's amazing. It would be a pity to lose him. So hold him tight, and I'll try to calm down. I'm just so exhausted from this pregnancy. Why haven't you named your daughter yet? David said he'd come up with one. It's very important to him. But I've already named her Mary, to be honest. It's a beautiful name. All right, buddy. Why don't you just lay back and relax? When I get back from the cottage, I'll stop by and see you. I'm going to hang out with Mary and scold David for being so indifferent. What a workaholic he's turned out to be. You wouldn't know it from him. Come on, Molly. Have a good trip. David didn't answer the phone on the day of their discharge, though he had promised to meet them at the hospital the day before. Lily began to worry a lot. She had always been an alarmist and assumed the worst. What if he had an accident? Nervous girl. Where to call in such cases? Exactly. Lily guessed to call David at work. Good afternoon. 
She greeted the girl on the other end of the line. Can I hear David? Oh, she faltered. And he doesn't work for us anymore. What do you mean? Lily was very surprised. How long ago? Three months ago he quit. What? No way? He didn't tell me anything. I'm sorry, who are you? Me? Lily started to say, but then she stopped herself. I'm sorry. Goodbye. She hung up the phone at a complete loss. Lily had no idea things would turn out like this. Of course, David could simply not tell her that he quit so that she did not worry. But in that case, where had he been all day? She made several more attempts to call the guy, but each time she got an answering machine. Lily left him a message, but within two hours he still hadn't called back. There was nothing to do. She would have to check out and go home alone with the baby. The worst part was that Lily had no keys to the apartment, no money, and no card to order a cab. When labor started, she didn't have time to pack anything, and David didn't bring her anything, promising to pick her up from the birth center. When Lily was handed her baby girl, she hugged the girl tightly and picked up her bag and walked out into the lobby. There were no people. She sat rocking her sleeping daughter in her arms for a few minutes and then went outside. It was a warm summer day, and people were walking everywhere, looking at their happy faces. Lily cried. She didn't know what to do. Taking the bus with the baby seemed like a bad idea. She didn't even know how to get home. So she stood there, tears streaming down her eyes, afraid of waking the baby. Lily didn't know how much time had passed. She sank helplessly on the bench and pressed the girl to her chest. Her thoughts drifted far away. Lily didn't even immediately realize that a man was addressing her. Girl, hey girl. The stranger shook her lightly by the shoulder. Are you all right? Do you need any help? Eh, excuse me? Lily snapped out of her oblivion and looked at the stranger. Expensive jacket, thin gold-rimmed glasses, radiant eyes. The man was in his fifties. There was a gray streak in his hair. I apologize for invading your space, the man continued. Are you crying? Sitting here alone with a baby? Obviously something's happened. What's it to you? Lily answered through her tears. I can't pass by someone who's in trouble. The man smiled softly and Lily even felt a little ashamed that she was close to him. My name is Nicholas, and you? Lily, embarrassed girl, but responded with a handshake on the outstretched hand of the interlocutor. And this miracle? Nicholas nodded at the little girl. She has no name yet. Or rather, it's on the papers. I named her Mary. David, Lily burst into tears again at the memory of the boy. I can see that you, dear Lily, are in some kind of trouble. It's not hard to guess that it has to do with a certain David. The man sat down next to me, showing that he was ready to listen to the strange girl's story. Pardon me for imposing. I realize how it all looks from the outside, but maybe I can help you. No one can help me. The girl sighed deeply, holding the little girl even tighter. Honestly, I don't even know what happened, so much so that I was discharged from the hospital. And David, my boyfriend. Uh, him. He's disappeared. I don't have any money or keys to my apartment. And he's not answering his cell phone. I don't know what to think. David quit his job, but he hasn't told me anything. And I don't know if he's lying to me or if something's wrong. He's been acting out lately, but I haven't noticed because I'm pregnant. And now I have to get home and I don't have money for a cab. That's the problem? Nicholas raised an eyebrow. Let me give you a ride. It's not that hard. I have a car. How far to go? To Vernadsky. I'd take the bus, but I don't know which route goes from here to there. Come on, Lily. We'll be there in 15 minutes. Just don't cry. I can't thank you enough. Come on. It's nothing. Nicholas took Lily's bag and walked her to the car. The luxurious black SUV gleamed brightly in the sun. Lily had only seen them in pictures. She didn't know the make of the car, but she immediately realized that such a car cost a fortune. Come on. Make yourselves comfortable. Nicholas opened the back door showing a cozy light interior. Lily was even afraid to sit on such expensive leather. I'll hold the baby. I promise I won't drop her. I promise. Nicholas's tone was so warm that Lily held the baby out to him without a second thought. She got into the car, and then Nicholas immediately gave her the baby back to her and sat in the driver's seat. You have a beautiful car. She decided to compliment Lily. And this is just a means of transportation. Nicholas laughed. I myself rarely drive, but sometimes I want to drive. I decided to try out a new toy today. 
and I was so lucky. Otherwise, I would not have met you. My sister works at the maternity hospital where you were discharged. I dropped off some things for her. I came out and saw this beautiful girl crying. How could I pass her by? Thank you so much again, Lily replied quietly, afraid to wake her daughter. If it weren't for you, I'd be sitting there on the bench at a complete loss. Yeah, that boy was a real piece of work. I hope he had a really good reason for not coming. I don't know, Lily shrugged. The most important thing is that he's okay. And here's my house, third driveway. When Nicholas parked in the designated spot, Lily looked around the yard. Hmm, she furrowed her brow. David's car was parked here. Why isn't he answering his cell phone? Had he fallen asleep so soundly he'd forgotten all about it? Do you want me to help you up? No, she shook her head. I'm going to the second floor. There, you see the balcony, with the petunias, beautiful flowers. Yeah, I grow them every summer, my grandmother's favorite. Lily was silent, remembering that wrinkled, kind face. Okay, I'm gonna go, thanks again, you're welcome. It's such a small thing, Nicholas laughed. Be happy. Lily got out of the car and headed toward the entrance. She rang the intercom for a long time, but no one answered. It worried the girl a lot because, judging by the car, David was home. He didn't even walk to the nearest store. She waited until some woman came out of the driveway and ducked inside. Going up to the second floor, Lily felt that her legs refused to walk. Her whole body was shaking, and the girl could not cope with it in any way. Pressing the bell button, she listened for a long time, but not a sound came from the apartment. Even Karat didn't bark, though the dog always barked when the doorbell rang. After standing like that for a few minutes, Lily called the neighbors. Almost immediately, a sleepy woman in a pink robe opened the door. Who do you want? She asked Lily. I'm sorry I live next door. My boyfriend won't open the door. What's that got to do with me? The woman asked unhappily. Maybe you've seen him or know when he was last home? A deep thought process was reflected on the neighbor's face. And you mean David, don't you? Oh, Lily, I didn't even recognize you. Where's the baby from? Well, I was discharged from the hospital today, and David's gone missing. I guess he's not home. His car's outside, though. Maybe he's out walking his dog. No, I saw him yesterday. I think so. He was walking with some girl last night. Tall one. Didn't even say hello, even though we literally bumped into each other. I was just going to the store. Not anymore, I didn't see him. Are you sure? Something inside Lily shivered. Quite sure, the woman nodded. You don't have a key, do you? You've lived here a long time, it was quick. I didn't have time to take anything. The keys are at home. We don't even have anywhere to go right now, and David's not answering his cell phone. Well, I can't invite him over. I'm sorry, I'm not alone. So, no, 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 Lily shook her head. I wasn't asking, I'm just really worried. What if something happened? If you see him, please tell him I've been discharged. Tell him to call me. Okay, you know what? Apparently they're having a thing with that girl. How can I explain it? He put his arm around her. Well, not exactly modest. No, Lily hesitated. You must have imagined it. Okay, I'm sorry to bother you again. I'm gonna go. Tell him. Yes, I will. The neighbor nodded and closed the door. Lily stood outside her apartment for a while longer, but no one came to the door. Tears flowed down the girl's cheeks again. The only person she could go to now was Molly, but her friend was out of town. The spare keys to the apartment were in the purse Lily had left at home. Realizing the hopelessness of her situation, Lily slowly began to descend, hoping with all her heart that the baby wouldn't wake up anytime soon. As if sensing her mother's excitement, the girl began to move. Hush, hush, my joy. Bye-bye, Lily hummed, feeling the bitterly salty taste of tears on her lips. She stepped out of the driveway, thinking that she should have asked for the number of the kind man who had given her a ride home. Looking up, she found to her surprise that Nicholas's car was still parked in her yard. I knew it. With regret in his voice, he said, approaching the girl with the child. What? No home? God, I'm so glad you didn't leave, Lily exclaimed happily. I don't know what to think. I called, knocked, no answer, although his car is there. And David's always driving. Always. 
and the neighbor said she saw him with some girl last night, so I think I got it all figured out. Lily, why don't you get in the car? We'll figure something out. Already in the cabin, the girl slowly began to come to her senses. The girl in her arms was still sleeping soundly, but Lily felt that she could wake up at any moment and ask for food. Lily, Nicholas addressed her when they were leaving the yard. Tell me, do you have somewhere to go? I have a friend, but she won't be back for a couple days. I don't have a key to her apartment. And my grandmother, but she lives very far away, in another city. Then listen, I can offer to rent you a hotel room for a while, but I think with a child there will not be very comfortable. So let me take you back to my place now. Stay with me for a couple of days until your friend comes back, especially in case David shows up. Life happens. It would probably be very uncomfortable, Lily tried to refuse. It's uncomfortable to leave a mother with a newborn baby on the street. I have a big apartment. I don't live alone with my wife, but my son and daughter-in-law live with us now. While the house is being built, they won't be bored and scared. I promise. But how will they feel about the fact that you brought a complete stranger into the house? And even with a child? Don't worry about it. My wife is an understanding person. I think she'll be okay with it. Honestly? Lily frowned. I'm very uncomfortable, and besides... Yes, Nicholas looked at her seriously. Besides, I don't have anything for the baby. And you mean diapers? We'll stop by and get everything. But... So no buts, girl. I'm willing and able to help you. It's just silly to say no. Lily didn't argue, though the whole way she tried to understand what made this man come up to her and offer to help. When Nicholas came out of the supermarket carrying a couple of huge bags, Lily had no idea where they were going next. The SUV was carrying them down a noisy highway somewhere out of town. Lily, don't be frightened. I live in the suburbs. I moved out of the city a long time ago. It's very picturesque. And the house is big, so you won't embarrass anyone. Lily only nodded silently. She was nervous and wanted to sleep more than anything. Quite quickly, Nicholas drove them to a small cottage village. Judging by the mansions that stood here, the people who lived there were not simple. The houses, buried in gardens with fences, were decorated with lush stucco, and almost everywhere there were expensive cars. The air smelled of pine trees. How delicious it smells here, Lily exclaimed enthusiastically, inhaling a full breath. You bet it does, Nicholas answered proudly. And there is a relic pine forest around here. We can go for a walk later. Mia. My wife often walks in the woods. She even has her own trails. And it's perfectly safe. And there are lots of landscaped glades. How great. I was in Sosnovi Boro about five years ago, when I was still at school. My grandmother wouldn't let me go into the woods alone, but I was sneaking around anyway. Well, here we are. The car stopped at a beautiful wrought iron grate. The pattern was so ornate and filigreed that Lily at first even thought that the gate was covered with some unknown to her plants with black leaves. The lattice slid smoothly aside, and then Nicholas drove into a large courtyard paved with cobblestones. Some of the stones were covered with soft green moss. The small house that Lily had first thought was the master's house turned out to be an office, where the guard station and staff lived. The main mansion stood at the back of the garden. It was a magnificent three-story building of dark brick in the English style. One wall was completely covered with ivy, and in front of the main entrance a graceful fountain sparkled in the sun. Wow, Lily gasped when she saw the house. Now that's what I call a palace. It's not a palace. You should know, Lily, how much effort, exactly the effort, not money took to build this majesty. I don't need a place like this. It was Mia who insisted. A family nest for a big family. But in the end, only one son was born. He doesn't want to live with us. So he got married and is living in an apartment with his wife. Now we've decided to build our own house. And here we'll be alone with Mia. Why did they build all this? I would give anything to live in such a house for a short time. Lily sighed dreamily. Nonsense. I'm offering you the gift of staying here for as long as you like. I know it seems strange. I'm offering you a free place to stay for as long as you want. Yeah, Lily nodded. Very strange. And I never would have said yes if it hadn't been for that. That's it. Don't think bad thoughts, Nicholas said in a soothing tone. Let's go meet the family. Inside the house was even more beautiful than outside. 
Is anyone there? shouted Nicholas. A brisk clack of heels came from upstairs. Lily looked up and saw a woman coming down the stairs. She was a real beauty. She had a delicate, chiseled figure, black hair in a high style, and huge eyes. Lily stood as if paralyzed, cradling her still sleeping baby girl. Oh, said the woman in a ringing voice. You, dear, are not alone. Mia, meet Mia. This is Lily and her daughter Mary, and this beautiful young lady is my wife. Mia, the woman said softly, looking her guest over from head to toe. Lily felt intense embarrassment under the gaze of Nicole's wife's deep gray eyes. Well, Lily and Mary, welcome. Mia, the girls have gotten into a bit of a predicament, so they'll be staying with us for a couple days. Please help them get settled in. The baby will wake up soon. That's how Mia raised one eyebrow. All right, come on, honey. We have a spare room. I let the maid go, so we'll have to set it up ourselves. Of course, Lily replied fearfully. I didn't even. Don't be afraid or embarrassed. My husband is a good man. If he brought you here, he had his reasons. And I'm certainly not going to find out what they were, unless you want to talk about it. The thought crossed Lily's mind that the woman might think that Nicholas had brought a mistress and child into the house, but she immediately banished it, realizing that women like Mia do not cheat. And Nicholas was quite sane. The woman led Lily upstairs. They walked down a long corridor and entered one of the rooms. The first thing that caught their eye was a huge window almost the entire wall. The bedroom was spacious and bright, decorated in pale yellow hues. So Lily, look, Mia began. It has its own bathroom, so I don't think you'll have any trouble bathing the baby and such. The bed is quite comfortable. Unfortunately, we don't have a crib, so you'll have to sleep together. What do you mean? Lily was embarrassed. I've never seen such a luxurious bedroom in my life. Of course we'll sleep together, especially since I'm only staying with you for a couple days. Uh-huh, squinted Mia. Why don't you tell me what's going on? At that moment, the baby woke up and screamed her desire to eat. Oh, sorry. Lily was distracted. I'll feed Mary now. Of course, sweetie. I'm in no hurry. If you need a bath, towels and robes are there, feel free to take what you need. I'll leave you to it. When you're ready, come downstairs. When Mia came out, Lily breastfed the baby. Unpacking the bags, she found not only diapers but everything a newborn needed, including clothes. This surprised her greatly, since it was Nicholas who was making the purchase. I guess when Nicholas and Mia had a son, it was the father who did the shopping, she thought, and she knew what to get and what not to get. Interesting man. And actually, his wife's a bit too friendly for a rich woman. I never realized that people who have a lot of money, and it's obvious, judging by the house, can be kind and just take in a homeless person with a child. I can't take their kindness forever. I can't wait for Molly to come back. And then what? Go back to Grandma's? What happened at David's? Did he leave me? I have to call him anyway. I don't understand. It's too weird. Even if he did, couldn't he have talked to me instead of making me hope for something? Or did you just get cold feet? Lily bathed Mary, changed her into a cute onesie that was among the purchases, and put her to bed. The girl fell asleep very quickly. Wow, like a kitten, said the young mother. She just ate and went straight to sleep. I should take a nap myself. Lily went to shower and wrapped herself in a soft terry cloth robe and lay down next to her daughter. She fell asleep instantly. The girl woke up from the baby's crying. Lily fed her again, rocked her a little in her arms so that she fell asleep again. After getting dressed, the girl decided to go downstairs. She quietly left the room and quietly headed for the stairs. A young boy, apparently the son of the owners, was walking towards her. Hello he said, looking at Lily in surprise. You must be our guest. Hello. The girl was embarrassed. Yes. My name is Lily. I'm Mike, smiled the guy. Where's your daughter? Put her to bed. I don't even know if I can leave her alone, but it's probably not a good idea to carry her around someone else's house. What? You're afraid of disturbing someone? Don't worry. Everyone here lives on their own. Anne's at work right now. She won't be back until tonight. Dad's away on business, too. And Mia. Mom's downstairs in the kitchen cooking. It's weird. I can't remember the last time she was at the stove. If you want to talk to her, just go downstairs and take a left after the stairs so you don't get lost. 
It's such a big house. Yeah, but it's no use, Mike said in a detached sort of way. My parents built a family nest, but Anne refuses to live here. She and Mom have what you might call a difference of opinion. No, they love each other. But if they start running the place together, they're gonna fight. We're building a smaller house too. I always dreamed of living in one. But no. Would you like me to watch the baby for you? Mike suddenly suggested it. Anne and I are going to be parents sooner or later. Sure, if that's what you want, agreed Lily. Come on, I'll show her around. You can call me by my first name. It sounds weird when a girl my age treats me like an old man. Okay. Lily smiled. You too, then. They went into the room where Tiny Mary was sleeping in the middle of a huge bed in a sort of nest of comforter. Mike quietly approached the girl and looked at her in silence for a long time. Lily, listen, of course, it's none of my business. But where is the baby's father? I don't know, shrugged the girl. No, not in the sense that I don't know who he is or where he is. It's just that David's missing. Didn't come to meet me from the hospital. He's not home. If it wasn't for your dad, I don't know where I'd go. What do you mean? Mike was surprised. You mean he just didn't show up? How long have you two been together? A year and a half. But now, apparently, he just left me without any explanation. He didn't want a baby? That's the thing, he did. That's why I don't understand. The last time I saw him was right before I was discharged. He was fine. No sign that David had decided to leave us. And now the neighbor said he brought some girl home with him. Oh, wow. I need to find out for myself. As soon as my friend gets back, I'll go to her place and do it. Why wait around and wait for someone? First of all, you can stay here as long as you need to. Secondly, I don't have much to do right now. I can help you find your Romeo. Yes, it's a bit awkward to ask that. The girl hesitated. What's the big deal? It's not hard for me, even now I'm curious. What made that fool do such a thing? Go take a walk around the house, look around, and I'll sit with the girl. If she wakes up, I'll call you right away. Thank you. Lily nodded and left the room. She wanted to talk to Mia. Lily still couldn't believe that these people were willing to help her completely unselfishly. What if they were up to something? No, not likely, but still. What if this Mia is crazy? I've heard they're very good at pretending to be kind and caring. Who's going to look for me? Especially here. It's easy for people like that to commit a crime and get away with it. Maybe they are planning to take my child away from me and they will kill me, or at best make me a slave and make me clean these hundreds of rooms here. And I can't even escape. There are so many guards. Lily walked into the kitchen where Mia was working at the stove. The woman turned around, and immediately a wide smile appeared on her face showing her flawless teeth. Lily even flinched. Honey, are you awake? I came into the room but you and the baby were sleeping so sweetly that I didn't dare to disturb you. What about the baby? I met your son on the way in. He offered to babysit for a while. Mike loves kids. He's always asked for a sibling but it's never worked out. And Anne's not going to be a mother just yet. The girl's got her career in front of her. She's a designer. Honestly, I wouldn't worry too much if I were her. A belly doesn't interfere with her painting. You and Lily tell me. Is Mary a desirable child? Of course, she replied, amazed at the directness of the question. We both wanted a child very much. Not both, it seems. I spoke to Nicholas. He said that your boyfriend disappeared from the horizon without a trace. Lily, I'm sorry to be so blunt about this, but I need to understand who's in front of me so I can decide whether or not to help this person. I'm not Nicholas. He's the one who's being altruistic beyond belief. Mia, I'm not offended, Lily replied firmly. I'm in a stupid situation and I can't understand whether I'm stupid or just don't know something. But before I make conclusions, I need to figure it out for myself. David and I hadn't been together that long, and we weren't officially married. But when he found out he was going to be a father, he was very happy, or pretended to be. Now I'm not so sure about anything, he worked a lot, often stayed late, because it was necessary to earn money to support the child. Except it turned out he quit his job three months ago without telling me. And then a neighbor said she saw him in the company of a woman. And I'm not stupid, I can put two and two together. I just can't understand why he'd do that. 
marries his daughter too. How could he just cut people out of his life like that? He knew I had nowhere to go. All my things are still in the apartment. I wouldn't be lost. At the very least, I'll go back to my grandmother. Besides, I have arms and legs. I'll get a job again. It'll work out somehow. But why did he do that? Could it be that he's trying to get back at you? Is that man jealous? No way. Lily even laughed. Who would he be jealous of? When I started living with him, I quit my job. I was always at home. He knew my every move. I had only Molly as a friend, and male acquaintances were out of the question. David was jealous, of course, but I never gave him a reason. Why would I want revenge on him? Oh, a man can have strange things going on in his head. No, if that's what you think, then it's not worth pursuing. Then it's all trivial. He found someone else and decided to leave in English without saying goodbye. Then he's just a bastard. And you, Lily, should be glad you got rid of him so easily. So easily? Lily was surprised. But now I have a child that I can neither support nor give him a proper upbringing. What makes you think that? Children are happiness. Raise him and you can perfectly well alone. I can see from your communication that you're an adequate woman. Even this whole situation, another would be in tears. And you're calm. Not like a boa constrictor, of course, but you keep yourself in control. Mia, Lily's confused. I was wondering why you're helping me. I always thought that people like you prefer to stay out of other people's troubles. People like us, laughed the hostess. What kind, I wonder? Well, the rich. She looked away from Lily. Girl, sighed Mia. Money is not an indicator of indifference and callousness. My husband, you know, you'd better talk to him about it yourself. But in brief, he travels a lot and loves India the most. When he first went there, he was lucky enough to meet these people. In general, they completely turned his view of the world upside down. He often helps the underprivileged. Almost always people are to blame for their own misfortunes. Almost. Sometimes circumstances are such that there's nothing a person can do about it. Like you, for example. Of course, you can berate yourself for naivety, inattention, stupidity, after all. However, could you have known that the person you love would turn out to be a hypocrite? So he played his role well. And now everything depends on you. How to get out of this situation is entirely in your hands. It will be difficult, but nothing is impossible. And if a man like Nicholas can help, why not? It's just that there aren't many people capable of selfless acts these days. Not many, I agree, Mia nodded. But there are some, and you were lucky enough to meet one of them. Don't try to look for a catch, there isn't one. You're probably thinking to yourself that you're in the lair of the insane. I can see by the look on your face that I'm right. Yeah, Lily's embarrassed. To be honest, I had those thoughts. So, Mia sighed. Understand, everything that happens is not just an accident. If Nicholas hadn't gone to his sister, he wouldn't have met you and your daughter, wouldn't have offered to help, and God knows how things would have turned out. But it did. So you just have to move on with your life, learn the lessons, and try to see the whole picture. For example, do you have any thoughts on what you're going to do next? My friend's coming back day after tomorrow. I'm going to stay with her for a while. We used to work together, but I moved in with David and left that place. What did you do? Cook. Lily's blushing for some reason. It's my specialty. But I really like cooking. Uh-huh. Mia smiled. So you gave up your favorite business for your family? I guess so, she sighed. And now you're thinking of going back to it? I don't know how to do anything else. I just don't know how I can combine it with a child. I don't have any money, not even for the first time. Molly won't leave me on the street or let me starve you, of course. But I can't sit on her neck for long, so the best solution is to go back to my grandmother in the country. I'll get a job in a canteen or a diner. I'll leave Mary to her. Do you think she'd like that? Mia squinted. I doubt it. I don't have the best relationship with my grandmother. She wasn't too happy when she found out I'd dropped everything and started living with a guy. I don't have any parents. My mother died and I never knew my father. My grandmother is my only relative. She'll understand anyway. But there's also the possibility that she'll say no. Lily, listen. Mia's brow furrowed. What do you think of this proposal? Well, I'm looking for a cook right now. 
We had a woman working for us, but she had to leave for family reasons. I can't cook at all. Here you can appreciate my culinary delights. With these words, Mia slid a plate of pancakes to Lily. Nicholas only comes home in the evening, and so does Anne. I don't eat much. Mike works from home, so he's always hanging out in the kitchen. If I offer you a place and accommodation, would you accept? Would you? Lily looked at her hostess incredulously. But you don't even know how good I am at cooking. Better than me, anyway. Mia laughed. Sure, I could find a high-level chef, but what's the point? We don't need any culinary masterpieces. Normal and tasty home-cooked food is on the table. It's ideal. Try it if you like it. I'll pay good wages. How about this? We can cook dinner together now. If everyone at home likes it, you can start work tomorrow. But what's bothering you? Is there no one to take care of the baby? That's not a problem. And I'll get a nanny. While you're busy in the kitchen, she'll keep an eye on the girl. How is that possible? Lily was very surprised. Why are you even suggesting this to me? It seems to me that my level is far from the requirements of your family. Don't be pompous. A good cook is the key to the health and good mood of my family. And I have a feeling you're exactly that. My intuition never fails. And even the whole situation is so that the cook himself came to our house when we need him. I'd very much like to take you up on your offer, Mia, especially given my circumstances. But it's still too tempting. I used to be skeptical, suspicious. I didn't believe in people or in people. But Nicholas let me see the world. On the other hand, he always gives people a chance, whether it's family, subordinates, partners, or total strangers. And he set an example for me. Of course, I don't know anything about you, but for some reason I think I need to make you an offer and you need to accept it. Okay, Lily nodded. Let's make dinner. But I'm not going to live up to expectations. Confidence is one of the main keys to success. That's just my opinion. But it's that lack of confidence that could be the cause of your problems. Lily made a roast and a couple of salads. Mia almost didn't help, preferring not to interfere, but carefully watched everything the girl did. When everything was ready, they set the table together. So, the hostess looked around the dining room. Nicholas will be right back. I can't say about Anne. We'll have dinner without her. Here I am. Nicholas entered the dining room. What's that delicious smell? Mia, did you make something edible for once? Don't sarcasm. The woman smiled. Maybe I did. Sit down at the table and I'll go while I call Mike. Well, Lily, have you settled in a little? Asked Nicholas sitting down at the table. Yes, she answered a little apprehensively. We talked to Mia for a while. I calmed down. She was probably telling you what a great man I am. The man laughed. Lily was serious about that too. To me, you are. Stop it. I did the least I could do. Mia and Mike entered the dining room. The boy sniffed the air and seemed pleased. It's been a long time since I've had a roast, he said cheerfully. That's what it smells like. Anne must be staying late to avoid eating her mother's strepna. And it turns out she's missing out on a lot. Let me put some in for everyone, shyly suggested Lily. Chef's right, giggled Mia. Oh, so it was you, Lily, cooked. Nicholas was surprised. Yes she said shyly. I hope you like it. When the family started dinner, Lily received a lot of compliments. Everyone enjoyed the food very much. Mia sat and looked slyly at the girl, who was blushing heavily, but seemed very pleased. Well, Lily, said the hostess as they cleared everything off the table together. I guess I wasn't wrong. An agreement is worth more than money. Now Nicholas and Mike are not likely to eat anything else. I know them. I'm glad you all enjoyed yourselves. Go rest, the dishwasher will be fine, and your daughter's waiting for you. As she fell asleep, Lily tried to call David several more times, but he still didn't answer the phone. In the morning, Lily was awakened by a light knock on the door. She didn't immediately realize where she was. Lily, Mia whispered, peering into the bedroom. Are you still asleep? No, no, Mia, answered the girl, lifting herself up on the pillows. Lily. I invited the nanny. She's already here. So wake up. I'll introduce you. And you can trust her with your daughter. Alice is a very nice woman. She used to babysit Mike. Okay, Lily nodded. Give me five minutes. You can take your time. 
Mia smiled. Lily got ready even faster. Mary was sleeping peacefully in her pillows, though her mother had to feed her a couple times during the night. The girl was starting to cry. Here I am, smiled Lily, coming downstairs, where Mia was already waiting for her, in the company of a pleasant older lady. Meet Lily. This is Alice, you might say, our family friend. Where's the baby? Alice asked in a controlled voice. She's still asleep. Lily was embarrassed. The women talked some more and then the nanny went to the bedroom to check on her new ward. Lily, you can go about your duties and don't worry about anything. You can make breakfast at your discretion. No one here has any particular preferences. You can make coffee in the coffee machine. I'll show you how it works. But Nicholas only drinks it brewed in a pot. Can you make it? Sure, nodded Lily. I don't know if he'll like it or not, but I'll try. Mia showed her where the food and utensils were. After that, Lily immediately started to prepare breakfast. She deftly made toast and pancakes and even cooked porridge with berries. She made coffee for Nicholas according to her special recipe. When everything was almost ready, a strange girl flew into the kitchen. Don't tell me you're the goddess who cooked last night's dinner, the girl merrily calculated. I'm Anne, Mike's wife. Nice to meet you, Lily, Lily replied embarrassed. You can talk to me easily. I'm not Aunt Mia who's all high and mighty. Yeah, I didn't get that impression. Mia is a very nice woman. Nice, I'll give her that. But when it comes to her favorite son, she can be a real demon, believe me. So if you're gonna cook in this house, the first person you need to please is Mike. He'll be pleased. We'll all appreciate it. That's how I thought he liked it last night. I wish I'd already had it warmed up when I got home late. I put extra on top. I don't eat much, especially in this house, and I don't have time to cook. Even now, I'm already too busy at home, so I'll have a couple of pancakes. They look delicious. I'm gonna run. One by one, the household went downstairs and had breakfast. Even Nicholas was very pleased with the coffee Lily had made. It's delicious, Lily, he complimented. I usually make it myself, but you made it even better. What's your secret? Honestly? Lily laughed. I boil it the way my grandmother taught me. I just add a little salt and black pepper. It's more flavorful that way. And more interesting. A long, long time ago, a long time ago, I used to drink coffee just like this. It's so strange to try something like that again. You could see on Nicholas's face that he was lost in his memories. Do you know, Lily? Would you like me to tell you why I came to you that day? No, of course not. And any other woman in that situation, I would have offered to help. But you reminded me of someone I used to love. Before I met Mia, I was with a woman. You looked just like her. When I saw you, I thought for a moment I was seeing her again. Well, of course, there's no way you could be her. She's about 45 years old now. By the way, she's the one who used to make me the same coffee. It's so weird. What happened to her? Lily asked. Do you remember her so fondly? I can see that. As life happened, I loved that woman very much. But I had to go away for a long time. Nicholas sighed heavily, and when I came back, she wouldn't even talk to me. No matter how hard I tried, it was no use. So I left hoping that one day she would forgive me. But alas, I don't even know where she is now. And then I met Mia, and Mike was born. The past slowly let go of me. I stopped feeling sorry for myself. Being abandoned is really hard. It was wrong of me to leave her back then. But deep down, I always hoped she'd forgive me. I guess I can forgive David. What he did was despicable, but I don't want to hold a grudge. That's the right thing to do. You girls got your whole life ahead of you. You got a baby now. Live for you and her, not some shady man who doesn't want you. I'm not judging anyone, but you're the only person who's going to be there for you until your last breath. Learn to love yourself, and then everything will work out. Without that, you'll be a victim of circumstance forever. Thanks again for the coffee. I'm off to work. I'll look forward to dinner. I'm glad you took Mia up on her offer. There's never been such a delicious and simple home-cooked meal in this house. It makes one think of the ancestral nest again. Thank you, Nicholas. Lily smiled. Molly, hi, cheered Lily as she reached her friend. Lily, what are you doing? Where have you been? I came to your house yesterday. No one opens the door. The phones are silent. Did something happen? Molly, so much has happened. I don't even know where to start. 
Why don't we get together and you can tell me all about it? I can't yet. Anyway, I got a job. So, what about the baby? I can't believe David agreed to babysit. I mean, he works too. He doesn't work anywhere. David turned out to be a real asshole. He just disappeared. He didn't pick me up from the hospital. And I had no money, no keys to my apartment. I just stood there with Mary in my arms and sobbed. If it hadn't been for Nicholas, I'd still be on the streets. Nicholas? Molly was worried. Don't think anything of it. He's a very decent man. Anyway, he took me in for a couple of days. I thought I'd be gone when you came back. Then I'd stay with you for a while and go back to Grandma. But things worked out the way they did. This is a very rich and friendly family. When they found out about my situation, they offered to stay and cook for them. I said yes. Uh-huh. And? Does it pay well? I have no idea. It's good enough to have a roof over my head and food. And Mary's being looked after by a nice woman. The ex-nanny of the master's son. Nanny, you say? Real well-to-do family, apparently. They live in a village like this. Even the flies have a pass. Wow. So what? You're locked up and you don't get a day off? Molly, don't be ridiculous. I've been working for three days, but I don't think it's too early to ask for a day off, and I can't come and see you, can I? I'll ask the landlady. I don't think she'll mind. Tell me something. You were in my apartment. I mean his apartment. And no one opened the door? You know, I thought I heard someone coming to the door, but they weren't going to unlock it. And I heard the dog. He must have smelled me, but he wasn't allowed to bark. I see. Lily was thinking, I don't care what David says anymore, but I'd like to get my things, my papers. I'm not even going to show him my daughter. I can go with you, but he'll let me know, I know. Okay, I'll think of something. Thank God you're okay. I was so worried. Yeah, thank you. How did you manage to win the man of your dreams? Oh, I'll tell you all about it later. It's better than greet. I'm glad. Lily smiled. I'm going to make dinner. I don't want to spoil my impression of myself. Lily said good be to her friend and went to check on her daughter. When she turned around, she saw Mike leaning against the railing. Oops, shuddered the girl. I'm sorry. I didn't realize anyone was here. Lily, stop apologizing. I was just walking and didn't mean to interrupt. Seeing that you're on the phone, and it's me who should apologize for being an unwilling listener to the conversation. Tell me, do you need any help? Let me take you to your old apartment and get what you need. Are you crazy? You don't need that. Actually, you should at least get your passport. Your mother will give you an official registration. And you should probably go to the registry office to get a birth certificate. Otherwise, you're living here like illegal aliens. But how? David won't open the door. I don't know how to get into the apartment. It's very simple. He's the one who won't open the door for you. And if he sees that you're with a guy, he'll calm down. He'll realize that you've probably already found someone else and you're not in the mood for a scandal. You'll get your papers quickly and we'll leave. And if he doesn't open up, we'll just call the police. There are neighbors who can confirm that you lived there, right? Sure, nodded Lily. Then let's go. Wait. I probably can't leave the house that easily. I have to make dinner. It'll wait. Mom doesn't eat during the day, and I'll be in town with you for a bite to eat. No, I can't do that. I'm getting paid to do this now. Why don't I make it quick and then we'll go? All right. Especially since I doubt David will be home at this hour. There's a better chance of catching him tonight. Well, call me when you're ready. Lily made quick work of preparing dinner. But then she was distracted by her daughter giving Alice a chance to rest. With Mike, she could go only after dinner. Mia approved of her son's venture. When Lily and Mike drove up to the house, it was already beginning to get dark. There was a light burning in the windows of the old apartment. I think he's home. Lily pointed to the windows. Good, let's go. They didn't ring the intercom. When they got to the second floor, Lily didn't dare to call for a long time. Mike did it for her. The dog barked at the door, sensing her mistress. David, Open up. I know you're home. That's enough. I don't want anything from you. Just give me my papers. No one answered, though Lily heard cautious footsteps. The dog was barking. David, if you don't open up right now, we're calling the police. Suddenly Mike said. Lily pounded on the door, hoping that her ex-boyfriend would be frightened by the noise and unlock it. He did. The door opened as far as the chain would allow. 
David's face appeared in the gap. What do you want? He mumbled. Lily answered him, and Mike saw tears welling up in her eyes. The guy realized that she was paying up now and pushed the girl aside. Look, David, you're being an asshole, but it's certainly not my problem. Give the girl her things and live your life as you please. Who the hell are you? The ex-boyfriend asked sassily. Let's say it's definitely none of your business. But I will still say now Lily is under my protection from assholes like you. And since you didn't bother to explain to her what's going on, I'm not going to bother explaining anything to you. Get the papers out and we'll leave. Lily stood, trying not to breathe. She could hear Carrot barking somewhere in the back of the apartment. Locked him in, the girl thought. I hope he's not hurting the dog. She didn't want to interfere with the conversation. The mere sight of David hiding pathetically behind the chain was disgusting. David locked the door, but opened it again a couple minutes later, holding out a small folder and a woman's purse to Mike. Here's everything. If you need things, you can come by tomorrow and I'll pack everything up. I don't need anything else. Don't hurt the dog, was all Lily said and started down the stairs. You can forget about your daughter. If you ever want to see her again one day, you'd better put that thought out of your mind, David shouted after her, but Lily couldn't hear his words. Lily worked in the Nicholas family for almost a year. All the family loved both the girl and her little daughter. Mary was already crawling, and Alice was not the only one who sat with her when Lily was busy in the kitchen. Mia wasn't averse to babysitting either. Lily didn't think about David. She knew from Molly that his ex-boyfriend had a new girlfriend who was taking over his apartment. But even that information was unnecessary for Lily. She simply cut this man out of her life, not wanting to remember him, and especially not to dig for reasons for his behavior. She just wasn't interested. Now Lily's life was filled with new meanings. Her daughter was growing up fast. Lily didn't want to miss a minute of her life. Therefore, having coped with their duties, immediately ran to the baby. Lily liked her job. It was pleasant and not difficult for her to cook food for this family. Mia paid for the girl to take a cooking coursey from a famous chef. Girl, understand. The lady of the house told her passionately, it doesn't mean we don't like your cooking. Everything is wonderful. But you realize that working in this house is not the limit. You have potential. Mary will grow up. You'll have a lot of free time. Don't you want to branch out and say, open your own restaurant someday? Mia, where am I to a restaurant? Especially my own? Skeptically answered Lily. What's the big deal? You've been with us for a year already. And we've had guests more than once. You should have seen the faces with which they tasted your dishes. Many of them couldn't even dream of it. Of course, they're used to eating in good restaurants, but they don't have any soul. Yours is different. And if you take my idea seriously, which I recommend you do, I'll talk to Nicholas. I think he'd be interested in investing in you. What do you mean? Lily was surprised. Very simple. We'll ask him to lend you money for a small restaurant. You'll do it the way you want to do it. No one will interfere or impose their opinion. You hear me the way you want to hear me. Somehow I believe you'll succeed. I'll make sure you get your first clients. I think a lot of people we know will be interested. What if it doesn't work out? What if the restaurant doesn't pay for itself? Lily hesitated. I can imagine how much money that would be. To open your own place, even if it's small. Lily, Mia reassured her. Let's not worry about that. Okay? Your job is to say, yeah, leave the rest to me, please. Mia, I don't know how to react. It's very serious. It's not serious at all. I see how much you enjoy cooking. I know you deserve better than to be in the kitchen all day in our house, and it's up to you to provide a decent future for our little girl. Lily was pleased that Mia called Mary our girl. Sometimes it seemed to her that the lady of the house seriously considered Mary her granddaughter, even though her grandmotherly status did not match the appearance and character of this amazing woman. Anyway, honey, Mia continued, you think about it, and I'm not in a hurry, but never once my advice has not hurt anyone. In fact, everything around us now is because of me. If Nicholas hadn't listened to me, I dread to think where we'd all be. I'll think about it. Honestly, I had a dream once, but it was impossible to realize it. Nothing is impossible, Mia summed up, finishing her coffee. Lily really wanted to see her grandmother. She often called her granddaughter and urged her to come with her baby. Olivia had never seen her great-granddaughter in person, only by video link. The woman was glad that Lily was well settled and doing what she loved. 
but Lily didn't know how to ask for a vacation. One evening she was sitting in the kitchen watching Mary play, and there was a look of concern on her face. Nicholas, who had come in for a snack, noticed it at once. Lily, he turned to her, what's troubling you? Oh, I'm sorry. Lily began to apologize out of habit. Apologizing again, how many times can you feel guilty? You've become like family to us during this time. Speak plainly. I can tell something's bothering you. Let's be honest. I miss my grandmother a lot. She called again yesterday and asked me to come over. What's the problem? Nicholas furrowed his brow. It's not like we're keeping you tied up here. You've been working for a year now. You've never asked for a vacation. You don't even allow yourself a day off. You can't do that. Well, there can't be any buts. We're all human beings. It's okay to take a vacation. Go to her tomorrow and don't think about us. We'll live for a week without your bullshit. We won't die. Really? Lily's glowing. Sure, if you want, I can even take you. I thought you said she lived somewhere in the region. I have the day off. I'll take you and your little girl in comfort, especially since I haven't traveled behind the wheel for a long time, and when I was young I traveled all over the country. That was my job. I'll be happy to do it. If you are not kidding, then, of course, happily agreed Lily. It's a deal. Go pack your things and we'll leave in the morning. Lily immediately took advantage of the offer. So great was her desire to see her family. Lily hadn't seen Olivia for a long time. Her grandmother was sick, so she rarely went out. And Lily herself, caught up in family life, couldn't afford to be away for long and David wasn't particularly happy when she stuttered about a possible trip. As promised, Nicholas was ready in the morning, after feeding the whole family for the last time. Lily gathered Mary and walked out to the car. Nicholas was already sitting behind the wheel. The girl made herself comfortable with her daughter in the back seat. So, said the man, you did not tell me where we go, or it may turn out that the Far East? I'd like to be back by tonight. No. Lily laughed. What Far East? Grandma lives in Smolovo. It's only 150 kilometers from here. It used to take me a couple hours by bus. To Smolovo? Nicholas asked. Yes, I'll explain how to go. No, you don't need to. The man smiled. I know where it is. It so happens that when I was young, I often went there. You did? Lily was surprised. She noticed a strange, sad smile on Nicholas's face. Really? He sighed. You could say I've even lived there before, but not for long. Wow. The girl was surprised. Who would have thought it? Nicholas drove the car very carefully, but even with this they reached quickly. On the way, the man again voiced the proposal that Mia had made earlier. Well, Lily, are you thinking of going into the restaurant business? Oh, the girl was embarrassed. Did Mia really tell you everything? Husband and wife cannot have secrets, grinned the man. So I'd really like that, Lily admitted. If you really want to, then we'll do it in the best way. If you've got any ideas, go ahead. I can show you a couple of nice rooms later. Anne can help with the decorating. Oh, that's great. The girl almost clapped her hands. But I'm a little apprehensive. I don't know anything about running a business. There's nothing complicated about it. If you have a head on your shoulders, all you have to do is to give yourself to the process with all your soul. Leave all the organizational aspects to the specialists and just cook. The car pulled up to a five-story brick house with two entrances. And this is where your grandmother lives? Nicholas asked strangely. Yes, Lily nodded. I grew up here. It's not the most decent house, of course, but it's a very nice house, Nicholas said wistfully. Lily found Nicholas's behavior strange. It was obvious that everything in this small town caused in him some emotions that she did not understand. Will you come upstairs with me? Lily asked him. I'm afraid to embarrass your grandmother. But I'll help you lift the bags and the stroller. And you carry the baby. They got out of the car and headed for the driveway. Lily rang the intercom. The doorbell opened immediately. They left the stroller downstairs and went up to the fourth floor. There was no elevator in the house. On the way up, Lily noticed that Nicholas's face had changed dramatically. There was a look of confusion on it. When they reached the apartment, the man looked at the girl strangely. The door opened almost immediately and a short old woman appeared on the threshold. Seeing Lily, the woman cried. She rushed to hug her granddaughter and kiss the little girl. 
My little girl, cried Olivia, how glad I am to see you. I've never even dreamed of it. Why are we on the doorstep? Come quickly. It was only then that she saw Nicholas. The woman froze for a moment, staring into his face. It can't be, she said at last. Nicholas, is it really you? Lily didn't understand. She looked at her grandmother and then at Nicholas. Tears were streaming down the man's face. He was silent. Olivia came to her senses. Come on, get inside. There's no point in standing on the landing. Once everyone was inside, Lily finally asked, Grandma, I take it you two know each other. But from where? Only now was she beginning to realize that Nicholas wasn't just feeling all these emotions of nostalgia. It turns out we do know each other. Olivia looked at the man. He stood still, unable to cope with the shock. Nicholas, don't just stand there. Come into the room. The man obediently followed into the room. Lily noticed that he knew exactly where to go. She left Mary with him and went to help her grandmother with the bags. Lily, tell me, do you know who this man is? Of course I do, Grandma. Lily laughed. This man is my savior and employer. He made me believe that there is a place for miracles in the world. That's how. Olivia squinted at her. And now I'm very interested in how you know him and why you talk to him so easily. He said he used to come here a lot, but I didn't realize it was such a small world that you two would be old pals. We're not old pals, Grandma sighed. You know, I'm not at liberty to tell you that. You'd better ask him yourself, okay? But not now, later. And I'd really like to talk to him myself, to be honest. This is really weird, Grandma. Come on, let's go and meet Mary. She hasn't said anything yet, but I think you'll find her interesting. Lily watched Nicholas. He was playing with the girl, but it was obvious that the man was very excited. Olivia sat next to him and was visibly nervous as well. That's it. Lily couldn't stand it. I have a right to know what's going on here. If you need to talk, I'll go and walk with Mary. But then you'll tell me everything. She quickly gathered up the girl and left the apartment. After walking for about 40 minutes, Lily came back. Mary was falling asleep in the stroller, and the girl hurried into the house to put her to bed. She carefully laid the girl on her old bed. Almost nothing in the room had changed since she had left a few years ago. Even her mom's picture still hung on the wall slightly askew. Lily Machine corrected the picture and stepped out. Olivia and Nicholas were already waiting for her. Lily couldn't tell from their faces what they were talking about. Lily, Nicholas was the first to speak. Sit down, please. I have something very important to tell you. Let me leave you to it, Grandma said and headed for the exit. Olivia looked at her. The man looked at her. Don't go, please. Are you sure? Well, all right. What kind of games do you have here? Uncomprehendingly, she looked at Nicholas and then at Lily's grandmother. Sit down, sweetheart. Nicholas patted the cooch beside him. We're going to have a long talk. Lily obediently sat down next to him and prepared to listen. Once upon a time, the man spoke, taking a deep breath. No, it wasn't. 25 years ago, I, then a young specialist, was sent here to work. At that time, I was a promising designer of oil equipment, and a decent oil field had been discovered in Smolov. The corporation I was working for was responsible for the development, so I took a chance. No competition. Not a lot of people were willing to move up here from their big city jobs. I had nothing to lose. Besides, I had experience to gain. I got a room at your grandmother's. So that's it, Lily exclaimed. That makes sense. Wait, Lily, don't interrupt, Nicholas continued. Olivia here desire alone, you know. Your mother Kate wasn't thrilled with her mother's decision to rent out a room to a strange man. She was the same age then as you are now. I can imagine the emotions I stirred up in her back then. Anyway, Kate didn't like me right away. She realized that a tenant could at least make up for the family's plight in those bad times. But she couldn't control her emotions. She was always giving me all sorts of petty trouble. One morning I found her in the hallway, carefully cutting the laces of my shoes with a razor blade, so as not to wake Olivia. For some reason I started whispering at her. She whispered too. It's ridiculous to make excuses. The situation was so ridiculous that soon we were laughing out loud. That's how we started to become friends with her. Kate quickly turned from anger to grace. She made me coffee in the mornings and walked me to work. It became so habitual that I didn't notice how I fell in love with her. Kate reciprocated.
even Olivia didn't mind, and everything went well as long as my contract was in effect. When I finally got to go to her place, your mom wouldn't let me in. She wouldn't even open the door for me, but I was persistent. I got her to come down to my yard and we had a long talk in that funny fungus on the playground. She did not forgive me, swore that she had fallen out of love and found herself a new man with whom she is happy. And I, the fool, believed it. She said it all with such rage. Only now I realized it was all a lie. And she was just waiting for me to come down from my heaven to finally honor her with my presence. I argued fervently at the time that I was only doing it for her. But the fact that she'd confessed her feelings for someone else had cooled her down. I didn't want to interfere with her happiness. What could I do? I didn't even think she was lying or hiding anything from me. Why didn't I stand up for myself then? Why didn't I go to Olivia? Now I blame myself more than anything. Nicholas, come on, Grandma said in a soothing voice. Kate had made her choice. And she didn't say anything to me then about you coming, if only I could have. But, so I don't understand anything. So that was twenty odd years ago. Where was I? Now Lily, we're going to talk about you. Nicholas sighed. You see, your mom didn't just lie about the new man. She didn't say anything about you. And I didn't know anything. Nothing. I don't understand. The girl frowned. What is there to understand? The man laughed nervously. Kate was pregnant when I left. She probably didn't even know it yet. And then I disappeared. And she was all alone. I don't know why she didn't say anything to me when I called or if she was afraid of distracting me or losing me. Either way, she was wrong. But when you were born, I had no idea that my daughter was out there somewhere. Daughter? Lily questioned me. Daughter, exactly. Olivia, why didn't you make any attempt to contact me? You knew my number. Kate forbade me to talk to you. She thought you were with another woman, so she cut you out of her life. I was married to my job at the time, and I was madly in love with Kate. You should know how I berated myself for not rising to the level where I could provide her with a decent life. But I couldn't explain it to her. If a woman holds a grudge, it's no use trying to make contact. Kate was too proud, Olivia. But when she died, when you were left alone with a small child, couldn't you have called then? You think I didn't call? Even remembering my daughter didn't stop me from doing it. Alas, your number had already changed. I just didn't know where to find you. I thought you'd come back one day. And as you can see, I was right. Well, wait. Lily's come to her senses. Are you telling me that Nicholas is my father? Yes, Lily. That's right. Nicholas sighed and buried his face in his hands. But I have a completely different person on my birth certificate, the girl exclaimed. My mom always said that my dad died before I was born. Why would she tell you the truth? Perhaps she would have done so one day when you were older. But alas, we'll never know. No, it just can't be. Lily was stunned by the news. Remember I told you that I approached you that time at the maternity ward because you reminded me of someone. You look a lot like your mother. I kept wondering how much alike people can be. If only I had known then, things would have turned out differently. Lily, I'm sorry, but I really had no idea. This is crazy. Lily jumped up from the couch and started pacing back and forth across the room. No, I don't believe it. You're confusing things. She jumped out of the room, quickly put on her shoes and ran down the stairs. Nicholas shouted something to her from upstairs, but it was as if Lily didn't hear him. She ran out of the entryway and walked quickly, not seeing the road. She needed to gather her thoughts. Clouds thickened in a sky that had been cloudless up to that point. Distant rumbles of thunder were heard. Lily walked on, unable to see anything in front of her. When the first drops of rain hit her face, she lifted her face and looked into the black sky. Lightning flashed for a second blinding the girl. And at that moment, everything fell into place. Lily woke up and realized everything that Nicholas had told her. The rain intensified and the girl who was wearing only a light dress was instantly soaked through. She ran through the puddles back to the house. Nicholas was standing in the driveway. He too was already soaking wet. He looked so ridiculous in his gold glasses and lost in his expensive jacket against the shabby front door that she laughed. Lily, come inside. You'll catch a cold and a thunderstorm, shouted the man. The girl was crying. 
the tears running down her cheeks mixed with the raindrops. She ran up to Nicholas and hugged him tightly. They stood there in silence. Lily could feel the man's heart beating fast and loud, even louder than the thunder coming at them from all directions. It doesn't work like that, she sobbed. It's impossible. Nothing is impossible, girl. Nicholas stroked her head. You know what Mia says, and she's always right.